Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Today we have a special guest with us. We have Marco from the Swedish metal band The Crown. Welcome to the show, Marco. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> Again. So, Marco, The Crown started way back in 1990, over 25 years ago. So tell us what led you to form the band back then. I think we started out as a sort of a typical scenario that uh, uh, young people around 14, 15 years old that uh, uh, went to the same school and uh, discovered that uh, there were other metal heads there and uh, basically just approached each other and it turned out that, uh, wow, we have a bass player, we have a drummer, we have a guitarist. So uh, that's how it started. Uh, it was started out by Jan, Magnus and Johan. They went to the same school and only about Two, three months later, um, uh, I got to know Janne, and I was asked to try out for the band. So, yeah, we started out as kids. Uh, <laughs> what were the early days like then for you guys? What kind of shows were you playing? Some of your first ones. Oh, well, that was... Uh, <laughs> what's it called, like youth centers, you know? <laughs> and uh, they were like, uh, yeah, our parents basically and uh, some lost friends there and <laughs> maybe total 20 people in the audience. And uh, yeah, it was really primitive, you know, <laughs> and uh, just starting out. And we played a couple of those uh, youth centers. And uh, yeah, as I said, we were pretty young when we started. So um, I remember when we got a real good offer to play at a Swedish festival. I remember that Magnus hadn't even turned 18 yet. So uh, that was kind of a big thing because you know, there's a place, of course, with alcohol and stuff like that. So, so yeah, we were kids and we sort of uh, grew up together uh, and uh, learned a lot from each other, actually, because we started out also pretty typical, I believe. You start out by playing cover songs and uh, from there on you build up the courage to, you know, write your first song and show it to you, to the guys. So, um, yeah, pretty primitive times. I don't even think we mic'd up anything the first time <laughs> we played live, you know. It was <laughs> very primitive. So, so what kind of music then was, like, popular in the early 90s over there in Sweden? And, like, what kind of shows were you guys going to? It was mostly, like local bands or, or bands from uh, the, the close area. We, we live pretty close to Gothenburg as well. So uh, I believe the same time we sort of started the band, we, th there was this huge explosion in, in Sweden with the whole death metal thing. And uh, especially for us, we were heavily influenced by the death metal that came out from Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of killer bands and especially everything that was recorded at Morrison studio there. Um, for, for me, it was absolutely amazing. Everything they produced, it just sounded great. I mean, Morbid Angel, Death, D-Side, all those old, you know, classic death metal bands. But at the same time, it also started to really explode in Sweden. You know, we got Entombed and um, also the famous Sunlight studio. And so we were... Yeah, we were sort of under attack from everywhere because for us it was new music and it just made sense to us. And uh, that was how we basically started to sort of try to copy our, our uh, idols, you know. And, you know, like we had mentioned, it's been... 25 near years now. How would you say, I mean, you were mentioning how you guys like grew up together, obviously, if you started as teenagers, but how would you say that The Crown has evolved over the years, Marco, musically? Well, I hope we have evolved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, a lot in, in basically every aspect. Uh, yeah, we grew up together and today we, yeah. We're all married and not to each other, but no. <laughs> so I mean we we have yeah we have grown up together. It's it's just a, I, it's really amazing thing. It's nothing I sort of think about every day, but mm -hmm. during times like this with the interviews, they said 25 years ago. First of all, that's shocking how old I am. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, it, it it was a completely innocent times <laughs> in many ways. Well, today we're here to talk about your new album, Cobra Speed Venom, out on Metal Blade Records. So, Marco, when did you guys re-sign with Metal Blade, and what led you to uh, your decision to come back? 
Uh, it was it started out uh, early last year uh, when our uh, contract with Century Media uh, ran out, and uh, we decided to try out uh, Studio Fredman, where we used to record back in the days. We recorded Death Race King and Possess 13 there, so we decided to spend an extended weekend there with Frederick and record four songs. And uh, actually, the only idea that we came up with was we want to send this to Metal Blade and um, sort of touch base again if uh, if they're interested. And, and uh, yeah, they were interested right away when they heard those songs. So uh, it just felt right. I mean, uh, I understand also why we uh, once upon a time changed from Metal Blade to another label. And I think it has to do with a lot that once again, we started playing when we were kids, and mm -hmm. we, we just needed a change. And, uh, we, we, um, Metal Blade was the label that picked us up after we released two albums for a very small Swedish label, and uh, they really helped us a lot in so many ways. And But then when we quit and sort of had a break and came back, we just felt that we were, we're, we're going to try out something different. Yeah, we tried the different stuff, and uh, now we can compare, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're very happy with Metal Blade. There's still uh, a lot of the same people working there that we used to work with in the past. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of respect for them. So, Marco, tell us now a little bit about how you approached making this album musically and how everyone contributes to the writing process. We never start with a plan, mm -hmm. to be honest. It starts with song number one. And uh, hopefully around song number four or five, we start to get a feel for it. And uh, the feel was pretty fast that this is a this is very brutal songs. And um, because we've, we finally have a, a, a good lineup, uh, actually a lineup, uh, the <laughs> previous album was done under very different circumstances, but now we have a drummer, that helps a lot. <laughs> and uh, we, he happens to be very skilled and very fast as well, so it was very easy to push for those faster songs and uh, to sort of get back this sort of extreme edge again. And um, yeah, that's how we started. When we were around song number 10, we start to see the sort of full picture and we started uh, work on the ideas for cover and titles, and uh, the, that's basically how it starts. We, we're pretty bad at planning stuff, so we, we, we act on uh, sort of how we feel for the moment, at the moment. Well then, Marco, so tell us, who's in the band with you? Okay. <laughs> uh, besides me, we have Magnus, uh, also a songwriter playing bass. Uh, we have uh, Johan Lindström, is the vocalist, and uh, the new drummer, Henrik. Axelsson, and we have the lead guitar player Robin Sörqvist is his name. So uh, actually, both uh, of me, Magnus, and Robin wrote songs for this album. So uh, Robin is a sort of addition to the uh, songwriting team. So that helps. I, now I only need to do three songs. And <laughs> <laughs> And record again. <laughs> and, and, and so tell us, what are some of like the, the lyrical thing, themes on this album? As I said, it didn't start with a plan, but uh, I would say somewhere around song 12 or 13, we sort of sense that there are a couple of uh, mutual topics happening there. And uh, I would say what we sort of decided to go on was uh, the title track, the Cobra Speed Venom. Mm hmm uh, and there's also a song that ended up as a B-side for the Iron Crown single called uh, uh, Ride the Fire. And those touch a bit similar uh, topic. And the whole idea that sort of binds it together, especially with the cover artwork, with that tidal wave, is that Cobra Speed Venom, I wouldn't say it's, it's a political uh, uh, lyric, but it's more in a metaphysical style explaining sort of the state of the world where we are right now, that there is something really, really sort of bad, negative, venomous thing sweeping across the world right now. And it's actually going in a very super fast speed. And that's basically the result of all these, like social media and stuff, you know, a lot of hate propaganda that becomes truth to a lot of people and they just share and share. And 
you can't sort of help yourself. You get sucked into this, and that's what the tidal wave exp- uh, tries to uh, portray: is that it, it sucks in people uh, without mercy, you know. So, um, and also, uh, it was beautifully set by Christian Sloan Hall, the cover art uh, artist. He paid in a sort of sunset colors to it, mm-hmm. so it's not that typical blue-black no. <laughs> death metal color. So uh, I think it's beautiful. Uh, it is. The bigger, the bigger picture you see, the beautiful it is, because I like the fact that it has like a thousand details in there. Right. Uh, with, all, with all the faces, and, uh, and for me that's a bit old school, like, you know, Morbid Angel's debut, Alter of Man, there's, there's a lot of details, and... Um, yeah, I'm plus 40, so I'm used to, you know, holding LPs in my hand and staring you know, at details, so I love that part. Well, I was going to say the same thing, too. I like it, too. When you look at it really quick, you miss every single detail. But when you're actually yeah. looking at it and you see all the faces in the tidal wave and the way you just explained it, how it's, you know, a tidal wave comes in really, really fast. And it yeah. does kind of have that old school feel to it a little bit too and i'm 40 plus two marco so i could relate to you okay so (laughs) yeah it's cool also because uh christian paints with a pencil you know Mm -hmm. Uh, i mean we tried the digital artwork and yeah it's it's all fine but um, i prefer the real stuff and uh, i guess in a sense it's a sort of counter reaction because the the unfortunate thing nowadays is that beautiful artwork, they end up as a thumbnail on, you know. I know, yeah. So that's the sad part, but as I know that there's still a sort of need and market for the vinyls, it's uh, it's good to have a real go at, the, at, a, at a beautiful, for a beautiful cover, you know. Absolutely. Now, did you guys record this locally? Uh, excuse me, record what? Did you record the album locally? Oh, yeah. That's... <clears throat> we're pretty lucky there because Studio Fredman, I mean, he's like the best. Uh, but And uh, his studio is located about 40 minutes away where we live. Oh, so, nice. Uh, because it would be pretty difficult for us to you know, leave for UK or something like mm-hmm. that for a month to record. So uh, it worked out really great. And uh, as I said, luckily it's close. But it was, we also decided at the same time that since I produced our two previous albums, and it was a very sort of split thing to do. Uh, uh, I found myself alone in the <laughs> mixing room, you know, mixing stuff, and it wasn't that much of a band effort. So mm-hmm. for this album, we de- really decided that we're going to go into the studio, all of us, we're going to, you know, sleep there and work around the clock and act like a band. Mm-hmm. And um, because you should never underestimate, underestimate those brilliant ideas that come up after eight beers, three o'clock in the morning. So, so that can be the next genius thing ever <laughs> that you come up with. So, but, but those are important factors. Uh, and that's how we used to record, and I believe our best efforts are from uh, when, when we act as a team, you know? Of course. And now you, yeah. we were talking a little bit about how we like vinyl. Now, is this going to be released on vinyl as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was even happy to hear that Metal Blade, they're going to do sort of special box with a, a big flag of the cover. So it's going to be really cool. So uh, I'm happy that the vinyl still exists. It's, uh, it's, an, it's a beautiful art. It is. So now, I mean, as far as the vinyl goes, I mean, is it going to be, you know, different pictures on the inside? Do you know, could you tell us anything about how that's going to be released? Because we all like to collect it too, Marco. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I'm not 100% of all the details, uh, of course I've seen all the inlays and stuff, but mm-hmm. I really can't remember if it's super exactly like the digipacks and CDs, but uh, I know that uh, um, the song, uh, the songs, I believe it was limited to 10 songs on the LP, mm-hmm. um, and then there are bonus stuff that were, um, oh, the extra songs are on the digipacks, but um, yeah, and there are some bundles they are sort of selling together with, you know, shirts and whatever. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry to say I don't have 100% detail of it. But, <laughs> but there are special packages and bundles yeah. and all that kind of stuff, and they could probably get little sneak peeks on the uh, Metal Blade order sites. But I was just yeah, curious, right. And now are you guys going to be doing some touring now to follow up the release? Yeah, we're right now trying to figure out 
sort of 2018 and 19 how we're gonna approach the world and um, we have already stuff booked uh, both in Sweden and UK and and Japan is about to ge get done now and some festivals in Europe so uh, but besides that what we have been talking about is to uh, try to uh, play countries uh, we haven't played we've been lucky enough to play probably around 25 countries or something like that during our career but there's still countries we haven't played and um, also what we have discussed is that it was a long time ago we played in the US mm -hmm. as well. so uh, that would be really really cool it just need to work out you know bringing five guys over and make it work financially and stuff like right. that so uh, but uh, that is definitely on the on the wish list and Margo if people want to learn more about the band pick up merchandise, see what you guys are up to. What are the best websites for them to go to? I think Facebook has conquered the world. Mm -hmm. I think so. <laughs> and um, yeah, they should check out our Facebook because uh, it's uh, I we try to interact a lot and I've also posted a lot of, you know, guitar playthrough stuff mm -hmm. and, you know, so, uh, and that's uh, what's it called? Facebook slash The Crown Official. I would recommend to start there. And um, Instagram is pretty new to us. We just started out a few months ago. But uh, Facebook, yeah, that's, uh, we try to, uh, no, not only try, we do respond to everything. And we uh, try to interact as much as we can. Okay, well, there you guys have it. Cobra Speed Venom from The Crown out March 16th on Metal Blade Records. And Marco, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show and tell us about the album and all the best to you this year. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.